One sector of Australian business that will be closely watching the outcome of the carbon price negotiations is the geothermal power industry. Basically, geothermal power is electricity that's generated by heat that comes out of the ground. Australia has enormous deposits of hot rock, so it has a lot of potential to generate geothermal power. But even so, geothermics has progressed in fits and starts, and that's seen it fall out of favour with investors. Mike Sexton reports it's hoping the carbon price will drive more interest. Every year, thousands of punters head to Birdsville in outback Queensland for the annual races. Perhaps few would be aware, though, their tinnies are being kept on ice, in part, thanks to electricity generated from scalding hot water coming from deep beneath the desert floor. The water comes up from the artesian basin at 98 degrees Celsius. The water then passes through a gas-filled heat exchanger, which heats the gas and pressurises it, and then it goes through a turbine and produces electricity. The engineering is relatively simple, and the outcome is emission-free power 24 hours per day that doesn't rely on the wind blowing or the sun shining. The plan at Birdsville was um, custom-made when it was done, so it's done quite some time ago, but technology's changed now, and there's, um, this sort of plant is readily available and is being used throughout the world. This is just one form of what's known as geothermal energy, where the heat stored in subterranean rock formations is harnessed to generate electricity. Although the Birdsville plant is tiny, the geothermal potential in Australia is huge. The resource is vast. If we mined just 1% of the, national, uh, of the, of the nation's um, geothermal heat in the top 5 kilometres of the crust, we could meet 26,000 times Australia's annual energy supply. So there's a low, no limitation on the resource. Given the need for clean baseload power and the size of the resource, it's no surprise that more than 50 geothermal licences have been issued in Australia. One of the more advanced is Petrotherm, which has drilled shafts into hot rocks at Paralana in outback South Australia. The next step is to pump water down, which converts to steam, which is then used to drive turbines. We estimate at Paralana alone uh, we could produce 13,000 megawatts of power. Now that's about four times the power requirement uh, of South Australia. Excitement about the potential initially attracted investors prepared to take a risk on a new industry. But drilling wells hundreds of metres into granite in remote locations is a difficult and expensive business. And after years of promise, the industry has delivered only modest results. That, coupled with the GFC, has seen investors turning their backs on geothermal companies. The industry enjoyed quite strong support through 2007 and uh, that's when, as you indicated, that we saw the peak of that market. Since then it's basically been a downwards decline and where we sit at the moment, most stocks would be trading at about one-tenth of the level that they were trading at in late 2007. The share prices have suppressed. And I think part of what we read into there, other than the uncertainty uh, you know, in the share market and just general uh, economy, is that they're looking for someone to deliver, um, and um, that's important. New tax incentives next year could attract investors to return, but in the meantime, the industry is seeking more strategic funding from the government for expensive start-up costs. It points to the largest project in the country at Inaminka near the South Australia-Queensland border, where Geodynamics boasts it has the potential to generate almost one quarter of Australia's power. The company and its partners have spent $400 million, mostly in drilling costs. Of that, about $12 million has come from government. So any argument that this industry is the recipient of a whole lot of government lunges is not an accurate one if you look at where the money is coming from. Perhaps like other investors, the federal government is adopting a wait-and-see approach. The minister's office says it's committed more than $200 million and more could be available if companies can demonstrate success and raise matching funds. The industry feels it's still being shortchanged. We looked at the $5 billion clean energy initiative. Of that, $203 million has been committed to geothermal energy. Now you could say we haven't demonstrated enough project, uh, progress at this stage to perhaps attract more, but of that $203 million, somewhere around $11 million has actually been received by the industry.
market analysts believe it could be some time before investors are again willing to take a punt on geothermal. i don't think we've um yet seen the activity occurring in the field that will give people the confidence that we're soon to have projects that are commercial and i think there's still uncertainty around the carbon pricing environment all those factors lead to investor unease i think there will need to be a change in a number of those things before we're likely to see strong support for this sector again as all power generators away to dollar value on carbon terry callas from petrotherm believes that price won't have a great impact on geothermal energy in the short term the renewable energy target really is what will do the heavy lifting out to 2030 for almost all forms of renewable power but beyond that point beyond 2030 um, you really do need some certainty um, and that will come in the form of a carbon price which will replace over time the renewable target while most geothermal projects remain in limbo in the next few weeks petrotherm will begin testing its paralana operation if it all goes to plan the company will qualify for a multi-million dollar federal grant to build a power plant to supply electricity to a nearby mine. The earliest any power will be generated is late in 2012, but many believe its commercial success or failure will be a defining moment for a fledgling industry that's promised much but delivered little. Mark